Hello my treasures, it's time for the return of Naxxramas in the March of the Lich King mini set. Given that some of the artwork actually leaked out about a week or two earlier, the theme of the set isn't that big of a shock for me, and honestly it makes the most amount of sense. Naxxramas is a moving fortress, and what better way to use it once again than the attack on Silver Moon City. Let's start with the Death Knight cards. The first one is going to be Rhyme Scale Siren, which is a 3 cost 1 Frost Rune Naga Undead Minion with 2 attack, 3 HP. Valkyrie, if you cast 3 spells while holding this, freeze 3 random enemy minions. Now, when it came to the initial cards that were released for Death Knight, I was actually kind of shocked that we didn't see a lot of freeze support for the class, mainly because that does seem to fit in the Frost theme very, very well, and it is kind of weird that Frost became the direct damaging type of Death Knight deck instead of just a really powerful control style deck using a bunch of free support. However, the direct damaging is a little bit more fun to play against depending on how much damage they can actually output in a given turn, which may or may not be a problem with the current Frost Death Knight decks. However, as we learned from Alterac Valley and Free Shaman, there isn't really that good of a counter for Freeze style of decks, which is why they probably haven't really pushed them for quite a while, at least since Alterac Valley. This is a good card for a Freeze Cross DK deck. We don't really have too many payoffs. However, Death Knight is getting a Colossus minion, which fits this deck perfectly. Frost Queen Syndragosa is a 7 cost, 6 attack, 6 HP, 1 blood, 1 frost rune undead dragon with the colossus of two after an enemy minion is frozen destroy it for perfect control for a frost dk deck and then the wings will have a rush and freeze any character that are damaged by this minion now death knight doesn't really have that many ways to buff up their minions on board outside of anti-magic shell so you're probably only going to get one removal tool out of each individual wing of Cindergosa. However, that still is removing two minions from your opponent's board, which could be incredibly, incredibly powerful to actually do. If you find some ways to actually duplicate Cindergosa or even run additional copies of her, then this card is going to be really, really good in a freeze DK deck. However, there is one downside. You can't use Frostworm's Fury in a deck where you're going to run Frost Queen Cindergosa. So that's going to be a little bit annoying. It's kind of weird that they decided to not allow you to run both of those style of cards in the same deck, but I guess they wanted to give more chances to non-pure Death Knight decks to actually come into fruition, such as Rainbow DK or some of the other combinations that you could actually do. Now, Kazakazan is going to be rotating out with the new rotation, so there is going to be a really small window where I can actually try out a Dragon DK deck, which is something that I've been wanting to do. We just didn't have any reason to do it before, and now we have a perfect reason to. So look out for that in the nearby future. All right, for the last Death Knight card is construct quarter a three cost location with three durability destroy a friendly minion to summon a four five undead with rush this is just a better dark transformation for one more mana and it doesn't require a, the undead tag so you can use this as a way to trigger any death rattle that you really really want to while also providing yourself with a little bit of an additional advantage off of the four five Undead that you're going to have with Rush that could be used as a removal tool if you really need to. There's a lot of possibilities of this card being incredibly, incredibly powerful to actually play. It doesn't require any runes, so any Death Knight deck can actually use it, but I do think this will probably see the most play in a Death Rattle DK deck or maybe something like Unholy or even Blood just as an additional way to control the board a little bit more. Honestly, not a bad card to finish off the Death Knight cards for this mini set. It also does give Death Knight the two cards that they were missing, both a Colossus minion and a location card, which is really, really cool because both of those mechanics are probably some of the best mechanics that we've had in quite a long time. Now, for the final card reveal today, it is Rivendare War Rider, a six cost, six attack, six HP undead minion. Death Rattle, shuffle the other three horsemen into the deck. And sorry for what I'm about to do to all three of these horsemen's names. First one is going to be Zeliac, Conquest Rider, which is a six cost, six attack, six HP undead minion with taunt, Death Rattle. If you had all four horsemen died this game, destroy the enemy hero. All three of these other horsemen are going to have the exact same Death Rattle and they are going to have a different mechanic on each individual one. Bala Mix, Famine Rider with Life Steal instead of Taunt. Then we have Korax, Death Rider with Rush instead of Taunt. Now, where have we seen this effect before? 
Good old Uther the Ebon Blade. Fun fact, Uther actually summoned the second generation of the Four Horsemen and not the first generation like these four represent. But thematically, it makes a lot of sense that we are going to have the same exact effect that Uther had if you had all four horsemen, except when they die instead. This is going to be incredibly, incredibly hard to actually pull off. However, there is a certain card in Standard Hearthstone known as Varian, the King of Stormwind, that will draw two out of the three missing four horsemen out of your deck, which means you could probably consistently get this off in maybe Big Shaman with the new The Other Side card. That could be a fun little combo that you could try out. You could also prevent your opponent from interacting with the individual death rattles in Rogue if you decided to use this in a death rattle rogue deck as a big payoff there's a lot of really fun possibilities you could try to use to make this actually work though i do not think this is probably going to be the most consistent thing in the world and if it was it would be very very annoying to actually deal with so i always do love these type of cards that you actually have to build around to make them actually work the thing that you need to remember about this combo in particular is you only really need the first death rattle and whatever is your last rider's death rattle everything else can be silenced or anything else as long as they're not stolen from you because this should work very similar to the l1 boar where if all of the previous boars were actually silenced they still count for the final boars death rattle which in theory could make this a little bit easier to actually accomplish than something like an l1 boar deck and those decks already float around here and there between a druid and priest even without seeing the rest of the cards of the mini set, I think this is probably going to be my favorite and the one that I really want to use the most early on, especially because I love these big wacky combo decks and this will be absolutely perfect for a lot of different type of content that I can actually put out on the channel. Because there is so much death rattle synergy currently in standard hearthstone i do think there's a lot more classes than most people actually expect that can actually try to easily abuse this combo so let me know down below which out of these four cards you want to use the most rivendare is probably going to be the card that i really want to use first however syndragosa might be really really fun with the kazakazan style of death knight deck who knows we'll see how it all turns out like always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Until the next time, bye-bye.